What is up guys, Faris here, and today we're going to be talking about the open source computer science degree. Now, I felt like I spent like a thousand hours on this thing for the past week or two. I've been curating this list, figuring out what requirements need to be fulfilled for an undergraduate computer science degree. I took my own personal experience with my degree program. I looked at a bunch of different, you know, higher up Ivy League type school uh, computer science degree programs. And this open source computer science degree are courses that will satisfy your computer science undergraduate requirements, all except general education, because we don't really care too much about art history. But when it comes to the actual computer science aspect of things and what is required for the actual computer science degree, this is what I came up with. So here we have the open source computer science degree, and I have a few different categories within this. I have the computer science basics, I have programming, I have math, I have systems, I have theory, I have applications, and I have Unix. I did take a bit of help from a few sources. I'll leave all of those sources down in the description below because when I was doing some of my research, I stumbled across some of some other people or companies, if you will, that did something similar to this, but this is my take on it. And before we actually get into the, the courses, the list of courses, let me explain the layout of what of everything and kind of how I found the courses. So how I found the courses, I use Class Central. So as you can see, we have a lot of different courses depending on what you want to learn. For us, obviously, it's computer science, and that is 1,118 courses. That's a lot. That was a lot for me to go through and figure out what I found to be best for what we needed for the little uh, degree that I put together over here. But based on that requirement structure that I just mentioned, I use this to search and basically, you know, intro to CS or something about machine learning and what have you. And that this is the tool I used. Oh, and one other thing, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the video yet, it's kind of crucial. The reason this is called the open source computer science degree is because all of the classes are open source. Notice I use this tool, which is specifically labeled free online courses for computer science. So all of these are free. And what you'll notice is that all of the courses that I have chosen are available on edX.org, udacity.com, and coursera.org. What you'll notice about Coursera is that there are payment options, but what you're able to do is some courses you're able to access for free just flat out. And then other courses you're able to access via the audit system. So instead of buying a whole entire program or structure, or something that consists of four, five, six courses, you can just ask for one course, audit the course. And what Coursera essentially wants you to do once you audit is to buy that whole entire certification or, or what have you. But instead you can just audit it for free. And that's what I would encourage you to do considering this is all about getting the knowledge of a computer science degree for free. All right, so let's talk about how I set up all of this. I realized into doing all this research, it would make much more sense as a blog post. And essentially what I did is I read a, uh, I created a readme DMD over here on GitHub. I push it up to my GitHub. I did mess up on a few formatting that I just noticed while recording. Like I didn't include the schools right here, but I'll get that updated for you guys. I just want to explain essentially what I have going on here. So we have a few different categories, computer science basics, programming, math, systems, theory, applications, and Unix. And within each category, we have a table. Now this table has a few different columns, courses, which is self-explanatory, just kind of went over that, school. So although all of these are available on, the, on Coursera, Udacity, and edX, what you'll notice is here, this all the calculus courses are offered by MIT. Udacity, although it doesn't list it here, this particular course is offered by UVA. In, in Coursera, this particular course is offered by Duke. So these are essentially the platforms that these universities use to distribute these free courses. And that's what I labeled here. So UVA, UC San Diego. I try to stay consistent with the programming aspect, Duke, UW, University of Washington, so on and so forth. Duration and effort are essentially go together. Duration is how long it should take you to complete each course based on the effort put in. So two to five hours a week, six weeks is how long it should take you to do this. And then frequency. Now frequency is where it gets a little bit weird. So as you'll see, we're, we have self-paced, which self-paced is essentially the information's out there. There's no enroll date. You can just access it as you want, whenever you want. 
But when it comes to some of these other courses, they have once a month, twice a month, every week. And the reason I put it like that is because over here on the tool that I used, when it comes to uh, Class Central, let's click on this for example. If we go over to the start date, I read it as all of these are the actual start dates and it looks like this is about twice a month, essentially every other, every two weeks. However, something that I did notice, so this is a machine learning by Stanford. Let's go to this class over here. And as you can see, the start date is supposed to be 21st of January, 2019. However, today is January 18th. Oh, never mind. Looks like this one actually does enroll and starts January 21st. So that's what I mean by doing it twice a month or once a month in the frequency category. The, what I was trying to get at is that some of these courses on Coursera, I feel like the enroll date is whatever today's date is. So some of these may be self-paced. They just don't say it. They just have enroll starts on January 18th to get you to sign up today. That's my assumption. That's what I was trying to get at, but obviously some of these do have real enroll dates. Forget I said anything about frequency. Frequency is whenever the course is offered. Self-paced all the time, once a month, it's offered once a month. And then we have prerequisites. So some of these, obviously the computer science basics, this is essentially intro to computer science, mathematical thinking in computer science. You don't really have prerequisites. But over here, I kind of structure, especially within the programming or within the math and kind of give the prerequisite for each one. Obviously, calculus 1A, 1B, 1C, each one, a previous iteration is going to be the prerequisite to the next. And then the initial prerequisite will be an assumption that you know pre-calculus. And then same goes for the programming section. This comes after this, therefore this is the prerequisite to that. I think it's time to actually get down to the courses. Remember, this will be available on my GitHub for you to click on all of these courses. Some of these are affiliate links like the Coursera ones, but you're not buying anything. The only reason I included the Coursera deal as affiliate links is because if you do end up buying something, then that helps support the channel. But other than that, everything's free. So that's a disclaimer. So let's start off with computer science basics. This is what you would want to take at the very beginning before you take anything else. There are some like this, of course, you could take with it considering these aren't really prerequisites to that. However, I would recommend taking intro to computer science, I chose the UVA course. There are plenty of other courses available out there that could replace this or that or this or that or this. If you think you know a better course, put it down in the description below or fork this repository on GitHub, add it, and then I'll see if I want to throw that in here. It's just, this is what I found. That's also another disclaimer. So I would recommend taking an intro to computer science course first to see if you're actually interested in computer science. There's no point in trying to set up a whole entire schedule for yourself. Like, all right, I'm gonna take this, this, and this, and that for my first semester at school, because I do recommend taking this as a, like a real college course. And you wouldn't wanna go through all of that scheduling if computer science isn't really your thing. So just take intro to computer science. You can also take mathematical thinking in computer science at the same time. This is from what I can tell a decently easy course over there. So that one you can take alongside intro to computer science. Now onto programming. So I have this set up. Basically you start at course number one and you go all the way through to course number six, Java programming build a recommendation system. And it's essentially in order from one, two, three, four, five, six. That'll show over here in the prerequisite structure. And then what we have below is programming languages part A, B, and C. So the first few, that's all about Java programming, obviously. All the courses are called Java programming. The reason I chose Java, one, I really like Java, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but also I was stoked to see that there are six courses all offered by Duke available on Coursera where you're able to essentially have everything in chronological order, all of these go together perfectly. Plus Java syntax is very similar to many other languages that you will be using throughout your computer science and software engineering career. And if you were to start off with something like Python, although yes, you will learn all of the programming semantics, everything that has to go with the programming side of things, the syntax is 
a little bit more difficult to convert over to something like C++ or Swift or C Sharp for Java. So that's why I chose Java for all of those reasons. And then down here, the programming languages, this is essentially principles of programming. So something that I took when I was in computer science was a course called Principles of Programming where I learned three different uh, computer languages. So I learned Prolog, Pavre, and SMLNJ. SMLNJ you'll probably never hear about. And the other two are used in very niche areas, if at all. I don't know if any of them, any people use those professionally. I, I don't, I've never used it since that course. But the idea of Principles of Programming is to learn how to learn new languages. So that's why I touched on Java being able to translate into other languages, the syntax that is. That's what these three courses are all about. You learn a new language in each, and essentially this course is all about learning how to learn new languages based on the information you've learned from all of this. If that didn't make sense, leave a comment and I'll explain it better. So let's move on to math. Math is something that a lot of people are scared of when it comes to computer science, but something you have to remember is that computer science is indeed a science. And what is science? Science is a lot of math. And computer science, the way I like to look at it, is more of a math degree than it is an engineering degree. It's essentially like a math degree and an engineering degree had a baby inside a computer. Then you had computer science. So the main math that you will learn within computer science Calculus, linear algebra, probability, and statistics. Starting off with calculus. We have three courses here, follow-up courses, all by MIT, so it's very continuous. And these three courses are going to be MIT courses, so I would expect a bit of difficulty when jumping into that. Linear algebra, foundations to frontiers. Linear algebra is huge, especially when you start to get into other aspects of computer science. You're going to use a lot of linear algebra in computer science. You're essentially going to take linear algebra and apply it to computer science. That's a lot of what it is. You're applying math with code into the computer. With linear algebra, some calculus, a lot of uh, data structures, discrete structures, that t uh, type of thing. And then we have introductory to probability and data and then intro to statistics. Now, I tried to find something that was more consolidated. I think, in all honesty, that introduction to probability and data by Duke would cover essentially what you need, but I also found intro to uh, statistics, and that may work as well. In all honesty, I'm not sure, although these are from Duke and Stanford, that these are exactly what I wanted. I just couldn't find the exact, like, I took a probability and statistics course, all in one, and that was a requirement. That was like a two or 300 level course, statistics uh, category, and that was required for my CS degree, and that's essentially why I added these two in there. And then systems. Systems is where it gets where it gets fun. The beginning of systems, you may feel like, oh, I know all of this, you know, especially if you build a PC. I remember I built a PC right before my computer science degree, and I'm like, oh, I got this. Like the first few classes, we're going over some of the hardware, kind of how it's connected and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be easy. And then like the next week, when I put my guard down, it just came full force and it wasn't even like anything that has to do with all of the hardware. It's kind of the intricacies of the hardware. So build a modern computer from first principles from Nand Tetris one and two. This is from the Hebrew school of Jerusalem. And this supposedly is a very sought after course. A lot of people tend to like it, had very good reviews online. That's why I included it. Now this isn't something that you would want to hop into your first semester. I would recommend taking a your introduction to computer science or especially this first programming course and then hop into this over here because then you have a better understanding of basic programming knowledge, which is your prerequisite. And then introduction to operating systems. Just think of this as a more emphasized and advanced version of what you're learning in here. So it's more so operating systems, but once you go through all of that, you'll understand. And then theory, a big part of computer science is theory. I essentially just incorporated a lot of algorithms, theory, machines into this theory category, all three of which are from Princeton. I know it's not listed right here, but all three of these are from Princeton and it's not necessarily supposed to be taken in this order. There is another course that is supposed to be a prerequisite to this, or at least a first portion of it. I'm not sure how much it applies from one to another, but there's another course that you're supposed to take alongside this, but it's not available just yet. 
but I think this one is a very good start. You make sure your prerequisite is calculus one, cal not one A, but calculus one, all of them. So you want to make sure you take one A, one B, and one C because it's algorithms now. You, you're going to need to know math and calculus. You're going to be working with a lot of different type of math. It's not necessarily that you're going to be using calculus in it, but it'll. if you can understand calculus, you can understand this. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you want to move on to algorithms part one and then algorithms part two. Now into applications. So applications, I like to think of it as what's applicable. So software engineering introduction, I had to take essentially like an intro to software engineering. It, at least my class taught you a bit about agile development, how to work with the team and a lot that has to do with the actual software engineering aspect of things. So kind of like real world knowledge. And that's what I tried to try to find within this course. And then same goes for machine learning where it's a more applicable knowledge where before you're learning a lot of theory, a lot of basics, machine learning is very focused, offered by Stanford. Database management essentials, if you're gonna work computer science, take a database course. There are some computer science degrees like mine that didn't require a database course, but I took one anyway. And I'm so glad I did because you're gonna be working with databases essentially no matter what, unless you're doing some, if you're in computer science, you're gonna be working with databases. And then cryptography. So cryptography, that's, you know, fun little code, decipher codes and stuff like that, but on a grander scale. And then Unix. Unix is very basic work. That's why the prerequisites are none. And these are two that I found that I tend to like. And this is the only one that's not offered by a university. It's offered by Udacity, but it's only one week, five hours, I believe. Linux command line basics. If you're gonna be working with all of this. You should probably take both of these. If you wanna learn Linux, Unix, that type of stuff, which you will need to know in order to navigate through all of your directories and from one server to another. And it's, it's essentially what you live on your, your console, your Linux console. So definitely take those. And that's the end of my open source computer science degree. Like I said, if you have any recommendations on what maybe someone should take instead of this intro to computer science course, let me know. To be honest with you, I don't know how many of y'all made it to the end of this video. I'm sure plenty of y'all just went ahead in the description and clicked on the GitHub link or the Medium link if I do decide to post this on a Medium blog post. But if you did stick around, I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video because <laughs> this was probably the most time I spent working on a video beforehand, like prepping for the video. I put all of this together. And remember all of the sources for everything, including Class Central and some of the other sources that I use to help out with this, they're all linked down in the description below as well. Be sure to check those out, give those some love. And I think that's all for me. I'm gonna go to bed. Till next time guys, have a good one, peace.